Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to make uh, some tabletop churches, and we're going to make these out of scrap wood. These happen to be made from fencing boards. Uh, so, this is a couple of simple styles that I cut out. Now, this one is 12 inches tall, and I measured down 6 inches and made a mark on each side, and then I took the pitch of the roof uh, from the center of the top down to that six inch line on each side. So that's six there. And then, um, and then the height from there to the tip of the roof is another six inches. Uh, so again, I just took it slanted there, making my marks to show what the size is. So this is the fencing board wide and 12 inches tall. Now this one is more like 10 inches tall. And uh, I measured down, I think five inches on that roof and drew a line from the center down to the outer edge. And then I'm, I took another piece of board and uh, made the uh, steeple with it. So that one was just, I think I had a two inch board and I went up just a little bit higher. Now this is not important. The sizes, uh, the exact measure, measurements are not important. You just want somewhere around that. I just felt like that was a good size for a tabletop. Now these are some uh, note cards that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm using this simply for the uh, embossed design in the, in the paper and I'm going to use this to make the doors and windows. Now I cut that one too short so I end up cutting one longer because I want that door to come up higher. Now I'm doing several of these churches and uh, just showing you some different uh, ways of doing them. I, I used the shorter one that I made here and cut it in half and made two windows for it. But I'm just showing you some different styles and I don't, I'm not going to be doing these in an exact order. Um, and here I didn't get to videotape uh, what I did on this board. I didn't, I didn't paint it or stain it. I just took some um, joint compound and a stencil and um, and just kind of rubbed that with a spatula over the top of that stencil and then that gave me a raised design so that's what I did for the base of this one and here I'm taking my antiquing ink and going around the edges of these Again, I'm just going to show you some different finishes that I used on these. I'm not going to do them from start to finish. And I won't show every church that I did. I'm just giving you some ideas on how you can take just regular fencing boards and turn them into these. Now, the little piece on the bottom, that's just, I think it's two inches wide. It could be three inches Um but, and then just slightly longer than the width of the fencing board. And again, that measurement is, is not, doesn't have to be precise. It's just, you just want to do what works for yours. And um, I, I, I'm thinking it's two inches wide. Now you can make these as large or as small as you want. If you went a lot higher on these, then you would probably need your little baseboard to be a little bit wider. Now here I'm gluing these on. You could use tacky glue, that would probably be the best, uh, but I just happen to have my wood glue handy and so that's what I'm using. And I thought it would be pr appropriate to add a, a scripture stamp here since it is a church and uh, I will attach uh, several scripture stamps in the description because I know that you guys have a hard time finding these. Hobby Lobby used to have a good selection. My Hobby Lobby still has an okay selection, um, but a lot of you say that yours doesn't, and um, they are a little difficult to find on Amazon, but I just spent a while looking, and I have all those links that I will add in the description. 
Now these are some uh, trim pieces uh, where I took some uh, of the resin and um, and made some of these molds. And this is one of the trim molds from Redesign with Prima. And um, I like this one because it has uh, a lot of thin pieces in it. So I just like to make these molds up ahead of time and then I'll have them to use on, on items that I just need, that I have a flat surface on that I can just glue them on. Uh, otherwise, if you're, if you want your ready-made molds, then you can also make them out of hot glue. And if you did, if you didn't have the resin ones on hand and you didn't want to have to worry with the clay, then you could just use hot glue in your molds. And some of them that I'll be adding to some of these churches are made from hot glue. And I just take some dull scissors and cut these uh, when I need some length cut off of them. And in this case, I needed uh, a not just a 45 edge at the top. I needed even sharper edge than that. And I may not be using, uh, yeah, I'm using actually wire cutters here instead of dull scissors, but I have used both. And this is another trim piece uh, that I will try to locate to add in the description, but I'm going to use that over the doors. And here I'm using those same note cards uh, to make the doors. Now I'm gluing these molds on with both hot glue and um, where I'm adding it to the paper here, I felt like I, it would stick better and so I didn't worry with using the wood glue here. So in some places I just add the hot glue and then obviously some areas where it's going to be the res resin molds are going to be glued to the wood, I use both hot glue and wood glue. Now this is uh, a video again where I am just kind of skipping around. I'm not doing these in one from start to finish and then doing another from start to finish. I'm kind of moving around uh, actually the way that I worked on these today. Now I like these churches because for one thing I've always sold churches really well. People just love the little country churches and I understand because I love them myself. But also fencing boards are very inexpensive. They're very easy to cut, very easy to sand, and they're easy to find. So that's why I use fencing boards a lot on a lot of my crafts. But then uh, you don't have much money in this. Now with this particular one, with most of the churches I did, I put the steeple in the front or the part that has the steeple on it. With this one, I put it on the back. Now we're back to the one that I added scripture on and uh, I have clear coated at this point because uh, the stenciling that I did with the joint compound needed to be sealed and also that stamp I wanted to seal that so here I'm using one of my resin molds and this was one uh, that had a few different styles of crosses I'll look for that one to try to add that in the description as well but I like the look of this white with with just the natural wood I didn't even stain this this is the color that the fencing board is now, I do this sometimes uh, when I have um, the right color fencing board. A lot of times, they'll have too much red in the wood, and those won't work well. You'll just need to paint those, or I don't like the look of them, actually. Now, here I'm using more of that note card to make the door with, and another little mold. And this is one that I actually had to cut down. So most of the design on this mold uh, has been cut away. Sometimes you just have to do what fits and these don't have to be perfect. You just want them to, uh, to work for what you're using them for and nobody's gonna really look at it closely and pick it apart. So a lot of times you can use um, molds work that you w wouldn't normally think that you could use. 
and a lot of those larger molds uh, can be cut down. But I think these are really fun to make and you can make them very, very simple or you can make them as detailed as you want and you can make uh, them smaller than this obviously or you can make them larger or even even much larger. Um, I, I've made some of these very large and did them more simple and made mantle churches for them. And uh, so the really big ones are real pretty for that. I actually made some out of uh, barn wood, old barn wood, and that makes really pretty ones. And with those, obviously, you want to keep those very simple. Now, with these windows and doors, I wanted to really pronounce the embossing that was on that card. So, um, I took some hot glue and just kind of drew over the top of them here to add a lot more dimension to both the doors or the door and the windows. And now I'm painting this, and I think I'm just painting this one in the color drop cloth. And I'm just going over the whole thing with this. Uh, I said this was drop cloth, uh, but this isn't drop cloth. This is a new Dixie Bell Kohler, and uh, it is called Celery. Uh, what I did there where the molds met is I just kind of filled that in with glue and then painted over that. But I really like this Celery color. You can barely tell that there's uh, just a very slight green hue to it. And now with this one, I'm going to uh, take my gold gilding wax. I tried this with a uh, glove because it is a little bit difficult to get off your fingers. It will come off, but I just didn't want to bother. So I tried to use a glove here. As you can see, it's not working well at all. So at some point, I decided to just remove the glove and do things the way I usually do. So I went over all the trim in this, and then uh, and then I went over the door more solid. Again, this is one that I left the steeple in the back. Most of these I put the steeple in the front. And here's where I took my glove off and had a lot more control. But I decided I wanted this door to be more solid gold. So I ended up taking a little brush and going over this with the brush. I'm getting really excited about my open house uh, that's coming up on the 21st of this month. And so I, I don't have much time to prepare. So I've been very, very busy. But I'm excited that many of you have said that you're going to try to come. So I'm so excited to meet some more of my viewers. So here I'm adding more of that gold to the cross also. So on this one, I just made a stain from the color. This is a Dixie Bell color called Coffee Bean. But I have really, really watered that down. So there's actually more water in this than there is paint. Uh, but this color makes a really pretty stain and it dries fast so um, and you don't have the odor that you get from stain and uh, it goes pretty far because you watered it way down so uh, I would just start with a color that I liked uh, and just water it down a little at a time until you get uh, the uh, look that you want for stain and this is probably I probably have three or four times the water in this that I have paint paint and it is messy but it's just paint so it just it's just water-based paint so it comes right up so I'm giving this one a little bit more of a Christmas look so I'm just using some scrapbook papers for the door and windows and I'll be finishing that one up. But uh, this one is another one that I'm adding some of the gold gilding to, to. And this is the one with the steeple board on the front. So that's the two different looks that you get from this same pattern. Uh, you could make a lot of different patterns. I just feel like these two patterns really work well. And... Um, 
and then you could just kind of change them up and give them all different kinds of looks and I went a little heavier with the gold on these windows and door and I added a hang tag to all of these most of them I stamped some scripture on the hang tag now my friend Gina scored some beautiful doilies uh, at a yard sale and she was very kind in coming by the shop and sharing them with me. So on this next one, I'm going to be adding some doilies. So I'm just taking some scrapbook paper underneath the doors and I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. Uh, these churches, some of them are a little large and so they're hard to get in frame. Uh, but I'm just gluing that uh, doily that I cut a section from. I think this doily was heart-shaped, so I was able to uh, get the shape that I want from just one of the sides of the heart that would cover both of these doors. And I'm only putting that darker scrapbook paper behind just so that this doily shows up better. Now here, uh, I have added a doily at the top there, and then, um, and then I'm going to take some scrapbook paper that has some lace on it uh, and put over those doors. I didn't really like the look of that, so um, I could have done without putting something behind it, uh, but I am... And here I have stamped some scripture on a little book page that didn't have any writing on it and tore it out. And I'm gluing that over the top there. And then I finished this one off with a scripture hang tag. And then I got brave on this next one and decided to stamp directly onto the church itself. So I just used a, light, a lighter stamp pad. Uh, this is one actually that I had thrifted and just stamped that over the top of the door. Now this is one that my sister Tammy worked on today and I'm adding a hang tag to this. this. I love what she did to the steeple area of this one. There was a scrap or a, a um, cardstock, I guess it, it is, at uh, the Dollar Tree that you get in a pack, those papers that you get in a pack that are all different textures. Well, this one was uh, like a cobblestone texture, and it was brown, but she just dry brushed the white over the top of this and then wiped it off, and I just really liked the look that she got from this one, and so now I'm adding a hang tag to it. And this is the one that I added the Christmas colors to. But I went over my, I had painted my all my molds in the color buttercream. And then I went over them uh, with some Van Dyke brown glaze. And I really like the look that this gave the trim on this one. This is one that I used some scrapbook paper uh, to make the window and doors with. And I added some molds to this one, but then I decided that I wanted this one stained. And so I'm using that same watered down. No, actually, I'm not using that watered down stain here. I'm using the Van Dyke Brown Glaze, but I've watered it down. And I didn't water it down as much, but um, I added probably one part water to two parts glaze on this. But I, I don't worry with getting it on that door because it just gives it a deeper finish. And I'm going to be trimming out around that. Uh, so I don't worry about it blending too much here. But I just love the look that you get with those, um, with those molds adding this glaze over the top. Now I am being careful to trim out around that window because I don't want to add the stain to the window or the glaze to the window. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because I am trimming out around that window also. And when I stain on the front of these, I also stain on the sides and the back. And I'm doing a lot of my trim out on this one in, in uh, ribbon. And this is the uh, jute ribbon blend that you get at the Dollar Tree. So I'm using that for the roof. 
and then I'm also going to be trimming out around the doors. But instead of using that entire strip, I cut it in half, and that's what down the middle, long ways down the middle, and that's what I used around the, the doors. And obviously, I also used it around the window. And as you can see, that gives just the right amount of contrast. Now, I didn't do it on this one, uh, but I think I'm going to go back and um, add a darker line down the center of the doors. This should, the reason I used this scrapbook paper was I wanted it to resemble two doors. So I had that line down the middle, but I did mean to go back and darken that to give it a little bit more dimension. Here's where I'm cutting that trim in half, and that's what I'm using to trim around the doors and windows. Again, you can create so many different looks with these. And here is what they all look like finished. Uh, I'm going to be making some more, but this is all that I got to today. And uh, I just really like the look of them. And I think you can make them go in just about any kind of decor. Now, my style would be just a little bit more rustic than this. And I'm going to be doing some like that. But I do really like how these turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. And God bless you and your family.